Get comfortable. We have so much to discuss. Not only are we going to break down this trailer, but I have a whole kettle of tea for you today. Like, really hot tea. Ah, I can't wait. All right, so let's let's just dive in. Now, we want to start, I think, with Joker, because I don't want to make you wait till the very end of this video to talk about the big headline, and that's Jared Leto's return. You know, they always use return for these uh, DC movies. I think uh, Jared Leto Returns is a pretty darn good name for the Snyder Cut. And he, as I said in my trailer reaction, uh, he looks like a beautiful mess. Like that supermodel's lost his mind. And it's a really cool way to go with the character. You can really see why Harley Quinn would fall for this Joker. And I would love someday to see uh, Zack Snyder's version of Harley Quinn. She won't be in this movie, uh, but I would love to see her down the line. Now, some of you said I laughed like the Joker in my trailer reaction, which I thought was very funny, uh, but I can certainly relate to him considering how fast I had to put my own makeup on this morning when this trailer dropped in, adv like in advance because because of the leaks. It, you know, it dropped uh, like two hours or an hour early, an hour and a half early. So I was not prepared. So, you know, it's like Joker, same thing. Like Batman's got to give me more notice before we head out on a mission. Uh, or maybe he sleeps in his makeup so he's ready to go, but that would have a similar effect as anyone knows who's ever slept in their makeup. <laughs> but yes, a leak. That's why my trailer reaction was a little late. Thank you so much for those of you who waited for me. It's so I really so much appreciate it. Um, but, you know, I have to say, there's like real hate for the Snyder Cut. Like, I know that you've seen it in the comments, but there's still a lot of hate in Hollywood, which is just kind of sad because... Like, what do they care if we have this party over here? It doesn't make any sense to me. But over the past 48 hours, I have heard things from various people that I know in the industry uh, that, you know, that hate's not gone away. Like, for instance, I was shocked yesterday. I was talking to a friend of mine who works in the industry um, and I was, and who's not at all related to this kind of stuff. And so I was like, wow, the Snyder Cut trailer comes out tomorrow. And this person said to me, you know, it's, you know, the rumor is around Hollywood that the reason this trends so well is because Russian bots are pushing it. And I was like, are you kidding me? People are working their butts off to promote this thing on social media. Zack Snyder literally has an army of people who, who, who come from a really good place and really just love this and want to see, you know, what was originally meant to be. It's really a work of art. Uh, and for someone to try and write off that effort as, oh yeah, it's Russian bots, is just like a really jerky thing to do. But apparently, some people in Hollywood believe that, which as I said again, is just really unfortunate. And then also, I, you know, I've, I've heard from some people that Warner Brothers is very happy, as I've told you, with the way this is getting attention, but it must be people not in Warner Brothers pictures, because, or too deep in Warner Brothers pictures, because there are still a number of people within that division who, who just hate this thing and just want it to go away. But HBO Max paid for emojis. That's no small thing. The Snyder Cut got emojis today. I'm so happy about it. And Jason Keelar, who's the head of Warner Media, the head of this whole thing, has been really aggressively tweeting about it. So I think that for the Snyder Cut to move forward, I want to refine where I think the path forward is. I still think it's with Jared Leto's Joker, but I think it's going to have to be through the HBO division. Remember that HBO Max content, original movies goes through Warner Brothers, and original series, they, those also go through Walter Hamada, you know, as you've seen with the Peacemaker and the Batman show, but maybe the Snyderverse could be one thing that's just at HBO, uh, who runs the most of the original series, uh, like Watchmen was, right? That's a DC property, but that was done through uh, HBO. So maybe the Snyderverse could live there. And, you know, as we all know, because this is a four-hour movie, Zack Snyder loves to tell long stories anyway, so why not just have him, you know, parlay that into doing a miniseries? Uh, and I, you know, again, this was supposed to be a series, and I'll, I'll confirm it because it's been reported by others, uh, but it was because of talent contracts, that talent contracts weren't set up for episodic, an episodic release, so it would have been too much red tape to, to renegotiate those. So, but yeah, I think, you know, going forward, that's, that's I think now, Again, based off of new information, the path forward. Jared Leto's Joker for HBO for a series. And since it's not related at all to the movies anymore, because the movies are going very much in a different direction under Hamada, I don't see why the Snyderverse couldn't be something that's over at HBO, um, HBO proper, you know. And Jason Keillor could could make that directive. It depends on how big a hit the Snyder Cut is. If the Snyder Cut's a huge monster hit and it's trending like crazy today, not because of Russian bots, goddammit. Russian bots can't subscribe. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they'll say a bunch of Russian bots subscribe to HBO Max and watch the Snyder Cut. Those guys are so evil. 
<laughs> so ridiculous. But hopefully if there are enough numbers and enough chatter, because this is the only thing that HBO Max has that can compete with like the Marvel and Star Wars content on Disney Plus so far. Uh, and Peacemaker isn't coming out until January. So if this does well enough, you know, maybe Jason Keeler would step in. And, you know, again, I don't see why anybody at Warner Brothers would be unhappy about that because it just helps the DC brand, right? We, they are promoting the multiverse themselves. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the movie on a more positive note. Very exciting. So I've seen a number of people who are haters in the comments say, uh, I know how it ends, so why would I watch this? You don't know how it ends. I don't know. I won't tell you what the scene is, but I will tell you that there's a new end scene in the movie. It's pretty awesome. You're going to be really, really excited when you see it. So you don't know how it ends. And it's totally a new scene that has never appeared. It's not not been amended. It's not from the, the you know, as I said, this this promotion needs to prove that it's not, as I said in my trailer reaction, a color-corrected ver version of Justice League. There's a lot of new stuff, which seems pretty clear to me, uh, and lots of new stories. A uh, story, you know, things that were either ne were left on the cutting room floor after Joss Whedon took over, so that's why it's new, and then new things that uh, Zack Snyder shot for the Snyder Cut. Uh, also, you're going to get, and so, so like the nightmare sequence is totally now. So those are definitely two new things that you can expect. There's one more trailer, actually. It'll be a surprise trailer. You'll never know when it's going to drop. It's just going to drop really close to March 18th. And uh, that's, of course, I know a lot of you are worried about seeing too much, but it's a four-hour movie. You can't possibly see too much. Remember how we were worried we saw too much of Aquaman and James Wan was like, you didn't see too much. And he was right. So I'm very happy about that. Now, some of you have asked me to explain we live in a society, and I'm going to explain that up front because, again, Joker doesn't appear until the very end of the trailer. We live in a society is based on this meme that came about a couple of years ago with Joker, and it was done, it took on satirical aspects to it, you know, like that it was like pseudo-intellectual. So it was like a knowing wink when people would say we live in a society. It was meant to be a, like a sarcastic comment, all right? So... It's very clever that Zack Snyder brought that in to the into the, the actual you know DC canon you know by having Joker actually say it. Uh, although I've seen some people saying, well, is, you know, does he does Zack Snyder realize that it's a satirical line? Is he saying it unironically? I mean, you have to see the scene for more context. I just think it's a great nod and an Easter egg to the way these characters have lived beyond the even the source material uh, and the adaptations in the movies and TV. I think it's very clever. I like it a lot. And, you know, no matter how you feel about it, it's like trending on Twitter. So I guess it was a pretty darn good idea. So I think that's fantastic. So also some of you have been saying, what's with this aspect ratio? Well, remember, this is a movie that was shot to air in IMAX. And I think that's having a little bit of difficulty of that because of the pandemic. But I think there are still, there are wheels in motion to have some kind of IMAX event in the near future. So, but that's why it looks the way it does. It's a square because it's meant to play on a big IMAX square screen. And it's gonna be lovely if we can ever get to see that. I also think that it's important to realize that you're looking at, as I said, a work of art. You know, Zack Snyder and his team really do treat their VFX shots like works of art. And I think they definitely come across that way. And that's why there are so many people who love this stuff. You know, you might not appreciate it, but you should understand why so many do. So we're definitely going to be paying attention to the artistic elements of these shots as we go through it. And while we will have reverence, that doesn't mean we can't have a little fun with it, too. Like my Joker comments. It's fun to have fun with stuff that you love. All right, so let's get started. And this clearly shows a lot of story, damn it. You just have to pay attention. So I'm going to break that down for you, too. All right, so here we go. Finally. All right, I told you, we have a lot to talk about. All right, so here we go. This is the Superman scene from where he died in Batman v Superman. Now, there's a couple of stuff here that's really interesting. First of all, look at the gash in his chest. Oh, boy, that does not look good. He looks really bad. I'm surprised his, he can still scream, right? I guess his heart must have just been missed. I don't know my, my, uh, um, my um, you know, what, uh, what is it? Body parts that well, I forget the word. So I don't know if that was a direct hit to his heart or not. But he's letting out one last cry and you can see the sound waves actually coming out of his mouth. Like when you ring a bell! Which is why the Lex Luthor line about the bell has been wrong is layered over this. So killing Superman lets out like this, he lets out a death cry and it's like the top god has been killed, which is like why the lightning works so well because that's a little bit like Zeus. Now Wonder Woman's like, oh, technically I'm actually the one related to Zeus, but she's not the top god. So the top god has been killed and that means it's open season on Earth again, right? So like Superman was the only thing keeping people away. It's like our security system just went down. Damn it! 
So that's kind of what's happening here. And so that's why you have, so it's really showing you the path from Man of Steel through Batman v Superman and now Justice League, that this is a continuous story. So the bell has been rung and that's why you see it's so vital that these sound waves ring out. He's like, that really hurt, damn it. It's worse than stubbing a toe. So you see that come out there. And now this is very important. So Lex Luthor's talking about it. And you see from the battlefield, there's Metropolis in the background. Oh, isn't that amazing? Although those people are like, are you going to build a park here? I just got amazing real estate. So it carries up over it. And then, so he's talking and you see the sound wave. It's, 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 you ought to really pay attention. So the sound wave echoes out over here. And it goes over the city and away from the battlefield and up into the sky, to the stars, where on Apocalypse, they're like, do you hear something? Ro suit up and roll out. Let's go. Well, actually, let's send Steppenwolf because let's just make sure there aren't any other gods on Earth, right? But there are. <laughs> you know, so uh, that's going to be great. So that's what that's what this is. So th I think that's really cool. I think that it's really, really great. And as I said in my trailer reaction, you know, making superheroes versus alien like a gr aliens be like a, the new Greek gods fight. You know, they're you know, dark dark side and his ilk like you know are literally part of the new gods franchise in DC. Although Eternals is racing them to the multiplex. God damn it! So, and Wonder Woman makes the Greek gods canon in the DC EU because she has the Greek gods and they really need to bring them back in more with her stories. I'm hoping, you know, it was a, it was a mistake not to factor them more into Wonder Woman 1984 and I'm hoping they bring them back in strongly with Wonder Woman 3 and the Amazons project that's coming up. So, I like that Wonder Woman's like, oh yeah, we haven't had any cool Greek gods for a long time fighting around here. That's what it used to be like. Like Greek, people who like Greek mythology tend to go on to like comic books. I started out liking not just Archie, but also Greek mythology. And that's why I went on to like comic books so much. So I think it's a great correlation. So it's like, these are the new Greek gods. And if you're wondering what it was like to have Greek gods back in ancient Greece, it was like our comic books today. Or if it was real, it's like these superheroes today. So I think that really works quite well. I think it's really, really smart. All right, so the sound wave goes out to, to space, damn it. If only we had sound dampeners around the planet. No one died here, keep moving. So here is Hippolyta looking pretty great. It must be cold in Themyscira right now. It's the down season. I love Harley Quinn when they go to Themyscira as a resort. That was a great episode. So I think that, I think this is right after you see the place where the mother box was kept crumble, all right? So I have some jokes about that, but we'll wait till we see that, but it's very funny. So she's standing here at the edge. Oh, there it goes. Okay, great. So I think this is so funny. I, I like, I mean, it's probably because of the fight that it just fell apart, but I would love it if they were getting rid of the evidence. They're like, nothing to see here. We didn't have a mother box. What are you talking about? It's so embarrassing that we lost it. Although I do tell everybody else to come help them and go get it, you know, which is part of the whole flashback sequence. But it's going off the side. I'm glad, I'm glad they seem to have all gotten out in time. They're like, this is so bad. It reminds me a lot, actually, of that scene where Luke Skywalker with uh, R2-D2 R2, uh, is looking at the burning school after uh, Kylo Ren's attack. And as I told you, you know, when he puts his arm on uh, his hand on R2-D2, he's like, you can tell me the truth, R2-D2. Am I a bad teacher? And I'm like, and R2-D2 is like, and beeps. Yes, you are, I'm afraid. So, so sad we never really got to see Teacher Luke. But you know, they could change that. I think they opened a door on Disney+. Plus. All right, so we got our cool logos. They're all distressed, right? Because this is, this, is, this is serious. Look at that, I love it, it looks so cool. I love when they theme the logos to the project. They do that all the time, it's really great. So I love it. So here's Batman, and Batman's like, I've been doing stuff too. I, you know, you might think I was just taking a nap, but in fact, I had a dream, which was a premonition, which although to be fair, is a little bit like Tony Stark's premonition about Thanos. Um, just, you know, I do have to acknowledge that. So he's like, I had a dream and I looked really cool in it. Let me draw you a picture of how cool I looked. So it's Nightmare Batman. And there he's like, yeah, it looked bad. And then we'll get to that in a moment. But here's Wonder Woman looking fabulous. I love the gorgeousness of this shot. It's so sharp because none of that's real. So that's amazing VFX. But her, her high heels and uh, trench coat are, are real and she just looks amazing. But she has that arrow and she's like, whose damn arrow is this? She knows who it is, it's her mom's. Uh, and she's like, oh, this is bad. Oh, well, look at those crazy barriers. Like, don't come in here. That's funny. Uh, so, but that's just a really beautiful shot. And then, you know, I wondered why she had white on, but when you see how it makes her blend in with the rest of the, you know, the Parthenon or whatever that, wherever that is, it really looks great. It's her people, it's her history. I love it. All right. And so she's going in. 
I like when they have Wonder Woman be a little bit like Indiana Jones. I think that's a great path for her. And she's like, I also know something bad is coming. Oh, and there it is. Oh, I love this. The intricacies of this throne room are stunning. I wonder what's at the end there that he's walking towards there. You can see a little something there. Uh, but this is just gorgeous. Way to use the light on Apocalypse. They're like, we have these things, sh fireballs shooting out of the earth, but then we also make these beautiful stained glass windows to really play that up. I'm like, I love it. So this reminds me of the gorgeous throne room from Aquaman, speaking of Aquaman, and I just really like that. You know, it's, this is another royal house. Uh, and of course, the, the Atlanteans are have been involved in this whole thing. It's the Amazons, the Atlanteans, who of course also fought in Flashpoint, which they're trying to do. They can just work out, they're so slow at Warner Brothers. It's crazy. They're gonna do the whole multiverse saga before they even get started with this stuff over at DC, you know, over at MCU first. So, but I love this, I love it. It's very serious. So, um, are those, I wonder if, I can't, I think those are just parademons. Those aren't real subjects if they are. All right, so they're walking along. And this is a great shot, as we've seen before from the teasers of uh, Darkseid. With you know, I don't, I don't think that's Baby Darkseid. I think he's taken on the name of Darkseid, so he's all good. There's Desaad. You know, he's like, oh, I may not be the leader, but I got more, I got more robes on, I got more clothes on. So he looks very cool. And then, of course, as we already geeked out about. Granny goodness, she looks great. At first I was like, oh, she doesn't look enough like a grandma. I like that in the past she looks like a traditional grandma, like her head does, except for the black lipstick, and then everything else is like twisted. So I love that. But a lot of you were like, is that Judy Dench? It's not Judy Dench, but I can tell you, you know, it's Zack Snyder's story to tell, but I'll tell you a little bit of it. it uh, it's supposed to look like Judy Dench, and she'd be a great Granny goodness. So that makes me like the look a lot when I hear that. So it's supposed to look like Judy Dench. I don't think, I don't believe she shows up too many other places, if anywhere else at all. I don't know for sure. But this is actually the relative, apparently, of somebody who was working on the VFX. And he's like, I have a relative who looks like Judy Dench. And they're like, fantastic, film it. And it looks great. So I'm very excited about that. And putting Granny Goodness on the board is like pretty exciting. What a great character. Really, really love it. I don't know if the female Furies show up. Some of you have asked me. I love the female Furies. Uh, I think they're just so great. All right, so now here, Steppenwolf is like uh, just giving a report, and it looks like some pair of demons were such a rush that they also, you know, everyone's rushing around in this movie. Uh, they didn't get dressed either for work. They're like, we just showed up. At least we're here. And they're like, did you have to stand in the front? All right, so anyway, he kneels before, that looks like Desaad to me. I mean, he's pretty, being pretty deferential, although Desaad's always trying to take a lot of power from uh, Darkseid, as we know. He's always like, oh, I'm really the brains behind the operation. I'm Darkseid's work wife. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Steppenwolf is kneeling before him. And look, as a show of respect and also stupidity, he's exposed his head. He's taken down his armor. And he's showing quite a lot of skin there. Steppenwolf's wearing an off-the-shoulder dress in this shot. Um, but he's like, oh, look. He's like, look at my decollage. You can't be too upset with me. I'm sure I missaid what that word was. All right, so anyway, he's like, yes, if you want to cut my head off, I'm allowing you to. Please don't actually, though. So I think that's interesting. I would not. And you can kind of actually see the plates move. Are they, is he totally getting naked? It's like, just, it's like, no, it's fine. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You're good. You're good. Just keep going out there. Report to me again in a little bit. Yeah, he's totally getting undressed. Oh, that's freaky. They have a whole audience in there. Desaad's like, maybe you should clear the room. That's funny. Fifty Shades of Steppenwolf. All right, so there's the Amazons. Because Steppenwolf just said, oh, this planet will fall or something like that. So the Amazons are like, oh, damn it. We can't say it won't. Now look at that, that Amazon deserves a medal because she, I can't believe she feels that with that little sword, she is a match for this evil guy who actually has, now you can see it, he has, has hooves. So Alfred was really spot on with that metaphor when we get to it in a, in a few moments. I, I don't know why he has lightning too, you know? I'm sure that Wonder Woman's like, damn it, I'm the one who has lightning. What? I gotta copyright this. So yeah. So uh, at Amazon, she should not have done that. It's like, you're toast. Of course he knocked you right off of there. All right, so it's like Amazon whack-a-mole. So this is a great uh, way it's edited as well because Bruce Wayne says, I need warriors. Have you seen what we're up against? So then we get a couple of shots of our warriors. There's Wonder Woman. Uh, I guess that blast went outward because she protects all those uh, school children. I love that it's a all girls school. It really, very much plays into the Wonder Woman Amazon's uh, thing. I think that works really nicely. She takes out the building. 
goes forward, thank goodness. Now that's uh, Aquaman, but it's edited really well because it uses that momentum to go into Steppenwolf's underwater swing. But look, we're gonna get another supermodel shot. Look at that. He's like, hold on, I have this great eye light. Let me look at the camera. He looks fantastic. He looks so good. He's like, who did you, what, what supermodel did you say was upset? So he and Jared Leto can have a, a pose off. So he looks great. Although I don't wanna give anything away about the nightmare sequence. All right, so anyway, I better keep going. All right. So he looks so great. And so there is Cyborg. I thought it looks like Nightmare Cyborg. Boy, look, he really gave himself a skinny waist, didn't he? He's like, there's nothing there, I might as well. So I don't know. I think I would like to see a little bit more from Cyborg. That looks to me like it could be easily ripped off. I'm not too afraid of that. But I'm excited to see this scene and for Ray Fisher to really step into his own. So then, I love this. I love this, you know, for all the fun that we make of, of Ezra Miller's running, he did come up with the idea for this launch. Uh, and I love that launch, it's really cool. So sometimes he has good ideas and sometimes he has bad ideas. I wish that someone would talk to him about that. All right, so, and I look, at, look at that. That's totally Batman. He drives right through that stuff. He's like, nothing's gonna stop me. Although he has an even bigger car, which we'll see in a moment. So I like that he's got his sunglasses on. That's how cool he is. He's like, just another day at work. <laughs> Alfred's like, no, let me be a buzzkill. And he's like, Alfred, you're always the problem. Alfred's like, someone's got to say it to you. That's why you keep me around. I speak truth to power. All right, so here we have Wonder Woman fighting Steppenwolf. And I think everyone's attacking her at the same time. Thank goodness. I hated it in the other movie. Well, I hope we'll see it. We'll see if it's still in it. But I didn't like it when Steppenwolf was like, everybody back off. I want to fight her myself. It's like, why? Why? Although I don't know what she's looking at. That's pretty interesting. She's really able to take a little bit of a breather here in this fight. So here's Alfred being like, don't, um, is your team strong enough? He says, if you can't bring down the charging bull, and there's literally the charging bull, by the way. Oh, by the way, look, Alfred has a uh, work jumpsuit, just like Zack Snyder does. That's really funny. So uh, he looks very cool there. Uh, and so he's like literally a charging bull. He's like, maybe you shouldn't wave the red cape at them, which is a great nod, of course, to Superman. I like that. Although in this shot, Aquaman's taking him on. They like, let's dance. And they do seem to be doing some cool dance moves there. <laughs> so there's the red cape. And that's not Supergirl. Superman's like, those aren't Supergirl's legs, everybody. Okay, I'll do some more leg day. So everybody's looking at this little presentation. Batman's like, I have visual aids. I have a whole present presentation put together for you. And so they're like, yeah, Superman's dead. We, you know, uh, we don't, are, maybe after that talk from Alfred, he's like, maybe I should resurrect a dead person. And Alfred's like, that's not what I meant. <laughs> you always have to be careful with Bruce. He always takes it too far. So is your team strong enough? No, it's not. How do I bring back the dead? That's hilarious. Martian Manhunter's like, I'm right here. Well, I don't want to talk about too much about that. I'm very excited. So there's Lois. She's like, I'm still in this movie, damn it. So that looks like flashback stuff taking on Themyscira. Boy, it's going to take centuries to turn this resort back into something you can go to. The property damage. He's truly evil. I like this picture of his father. I wonder where that comes into play. Was Superman buried with it? Oh, that would be beautiful. Oh, that's also very sad. That's very sad. I really thought it was good casting to have Kevin Costner as his dad, even though his dad was like, let people die, son. And you're like, this seems very conflicted. So I think that would be beautiful. He's like, he's gonna come back and leave his dad yet again. I'm getting sad just thinking about it. That's really beautiful. So here, Kevin Costner has his speech redone from Man of Steel. He's like, you were put here for a reason. And that's really being shown that it applies to all of the Justice Leaguers, right? So here we see Cyborg. I think that's probably one of his dream sequences. We've seen some shots of him seeing his family again. Nice jacket, Letterman's jacket. There's Wonder Woman. She does a lot of cool slow-mo stuff in this uh, trailer. So there's shot one. She's like, I got my sword. That's when Flash passed it to her, remember? There's Aquaman using his trident to stop the water, but it's difficult. And there's Flash using his uh, speed to rescue Iris. Oh, look, they're falling in love. For him, for her, it would happen so quickly, but for Flash, it seems so long. So that's great. There's Batman being like, I can't have time to fall in love, but uh, where's Wonder Woman? All right, so here we go. All right, so there's uh, Lois and Clark again. She, she's like, she, she does have a hard time keeping her hands off of him. Although, you know, he is really testing her walking around shirtless like that. So I don't understand still why he makes gravel levitate. I don't get it. It's cool, it's cool as hell. 
but I still don't get why he does it. And he's got his black suit on. He looks great. Now, there's been a lot of talk about how this isn't the Boy Scout version, Boy Scout version of Superman, but I do want to point out that he has total Boy Sc- uh, Scout hair style right here. Like his hair's so neatly combed. I love it. He's like, I can't go out flying. If-. Although, does he use Gorilla Glue? How does he keep it in place when he's flying so fast? You think every time he lands, he'd look ridiculously funny. Wouldn't that be funny if every time Superman landed, his hair was all a mess from flying really fast all around? He's like, what? You wanted me to get here fast or not? So he takes off, and I love that's also very good editing. You know, so we see a flying montage here from Superman to Cyborg. Right through the Themyscira. You're like, woo, look at that. They have a little obstacle course set up here at Themyscira. And then right, we come right up to Steppenwolf, who's like, I'm getting in this tin can. From what? He's like, I'm the only one. He's in a tin can himself. So there it is. That's the, that's... Uh, I believe it's called War Machine. And uh, and speaking of copyright issues, you know, that is Don Cheadle's name. So I don't really know if I'd want to call it War Machine. But that is a nod, of course, to the tank from the Batman, um, the, uh, the Dark Knight Returns comic. Uh, so I think that's a really great idea. And he's standing on it. I know what that scene is about. I'm not going to tell you, but it looks so cool. All right. So then there's uh, Barry talking to his dad, Billy Crudup. And that, look at that. Speak, you know, as weird as this running is, I have to say, Flash's ability to coordinate down to the millisecond is impressive because you can see they're coordinating something here at the mother box. So Cyborg's doing something and Flash is like, I'm ready, buddy. I love their teamwork. It's a shame they won't be able to continue going forward because, you know, they're trying to do it Cyborg and Flash, like Cyborg and Beast Boy in the comics. So it's too bad they won't be able to. Wow, look at the light show that, uh, that uh, Flash is putting on. It's so gorgeous. I love to watch you run, Flash. You know, it's, even though I actually don't like his running, every, you know, this is a good distraction from it. So he's coming through, and I like that. It looks a little bit like a big game of keep away because there's Steppenwolf trying to get the mother box there underwater. There's Clack with the two ladies of his life. So lots of quick shots of fighting here. And I love this of Flash running again, and you can see he's running towards some kind of event because there he is in the bottom, which gives you an idea of the scale of that explosion. Oh, that's a light show we maybe don't want to see. But Flash is like, I'm on it. So this is great. This is a really cool shot. They're exiting. Some of you say that you think you can see someone back there. I think that's just actually, that's not anybody. That's the, that's the little things on Batman's gauntlets. So there's no one standing there. So that's our Justice League, our new Greek gods, our new pantheon. And so she's saying, they said the age of, he said the Age of Heroes would never return. So here's the former Age of Heroes with Amazons. That lady's really making the most of her screen time. She's really selling it. She really pops. Uh, I still feel bad that they don't have Philippus as a major character in the, in, the Mar- in, the, in the Wonder Woman movies. I don't know how they could leave her out like that. She's shown up, but not to the degree that she should have to date. And there are the Atlanteans. So that, we got them again. And there's Batman. He's like, yeah, I have a grappling hook. I don't, don't ask me what it's hooked onto. So look, that's another shot. That's crazy. Look at Wonder Woman. Wow. That's a, li- that's a little CGI there, that shot. But she's like, oh, you can see my face perfectly clear there. And I love this. I love Cyborg doing the swirl as he fires going through there. Ah, now Steve, Steve Trevor would be proud of those aerial maneuvers. And there's my favorite shot. I am such a sucker for laser vision. I love it so much. And in this movie, we're gonna, I don't know if Darkseid will actually use his mega beams, but we have laser vision versus laser, ver- laser vision. We've got heat vision versus omega beams. And heat vision's coming on in a big way these days. Homelander uses it all the time to fantastic effect on the boys. And Richard Madden's Icarus and upcoming Eternals from Marvel will also have heat vision because he's supposed to be a, basically Marvel Superman. Damn it! All right, so get ready for that. It's like they have a Superman and a Wonder Woman in that movie. Not cool. We'll see how effective they are. But I love that. And look how his, shot, his suit glistens, you know? That's really cool. I mean, I, that's just, it's, I really like Dark Superman, as you know. And this isn't Dark Superman, but, you know, it's a more gray Superman. And I like Superman uh, in that area. That's, I really like that. I mean, I like the Boy Scout, but that's tough to do. And I, I, but I appreciate this variation. Look, the S looks a little distressed there. I wonder what's going on. But it's just amazing. It's just, I think, the coolest shot of Henry Cavill's Superman I think we've ever seen. The raw power! The raw power. And he lets it unleash. And he's like, we have to be the new age of heroes. Zack Snyder's Justice League. A Max original, baby. And you can see a little bit of a, it looks like a mother box in the background there. I think that's what that is. Or a Justice League logo. Eh, it's back there. (laughs) 
And then we have this wonderful Joker line where he says, we live in a society, right, where like honor is not around anymore or something like that. And Batman, I love, I love the expression on um, uh, Ben Affleck's face. He looks so cool. And I love Cyborg in the back there. We don't see the rest of the team. And then, isn't that right, Batman? And he looks so great with the rack focus. Having the sun behind him is just fantastic. It gives him this great glow, aura. And I like that Joker has sad eyes. Like, what's Joker seen to make Joker sad? Sad clown, the sad clown, uh, you know, classic uh, idea. Uh, and I like that you can clearly say, see that it's red makeup. I, I don't think his hair is green. It's a little hard to tell here. But he's got uh, the red uh, he's not smiling though he's not smiling uh, and also these little cuts on his face and you can see that he does have the SWAT uh, vest on here you don't see him from the front though thank goodness so I don't want to totally have it given away but yeah Joker's like I like to appreciate the sunset sometimes that's the difference between you and me man and I just really like the delivery. I think it really works well. And the intensity of his stare. I just think it works really really well. It gives you a little bit of a better idea why maybe Batman wouldn't have killed him you know streaming March 18th. Oh, we know. We'll be there. So what do you think? What do you think of all this stuff? What do you think of the trailer? What do you think of some of that tea I just poured for you? Share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.